what's up, Skyball Kabir with Imagination Creation Films, and today, while well, we're talking about this, this is the Condor Blue Ultimate Komodo Rig, and is it the ultimate? Let's find out. Now, it's no small secret that I love the color blue, and in fact, some people might even go so far as to say, Balkan Blue. I, well, probably me. It just happens to be that a lot of the things in my life that I truly enjoy and admire and love and work with, and they just work, happen to be blue. They just all do. So when Condor Blue reached out and said, hey, we want you to check out our ultimate rig. It's a shoulder mount rig for Komodo with a full cage and power solution. I said, well, that sounds interesting because Honestly, I've been struggling trying to get a good build with a shoulder uh, rig for Komodo. So I said, well, wait, what color are the boxes? And they said, um, well, they're blue. I said, okay. They, they didn't really say that, and I didn't really ask that. Uh, they just showed up, and they were blue. <laughs> Now, is this foreshadowing? I have no idea. You know, I'm gonna dive in and tell you the real truth of what it is. I just really liked that it came in the color blue. <laughs> so I had to shoot this real quick before I dove in and did my full on review, which, you know what? Let's just do that right now. I just remembered that I did that blue intro, so yeah, this is an awkward transition. So it's been a few days now, and I have been playing with the shoulder rig, using it, putting it through its paces, and here is kind of the rig as to where I got it, to where it's useful to me. And well, let's go through a lot of the stuff that it is, and we'll talk about some pros and cons afterwards. First, let's clear the airways. Condor Blue did send this out to me for review and evaluation. They do not get to see, they don't have any input. This is 100% my honest review, and I'm gonna do exactly what I always do and tell you the good, the bad, and well, there's not really any ugly because look at these boxes, they're pretty. When you buy the Ultimate Rig, what you're gonna get, and there's some optional accessories shown on here, um, and they have other options as well. I just put it in the configuration that I needed to make it work. So you're gonna get the handle, you're gonna get the Komodo cage, you're gonna get the riser, you're gonna get some rails, you're gonna get these grip arms and they're adjustable. You will get the V-mount battery plate and cable. Uh, you will also get the uh, aluminum lens cap. This right here is optional. Uh, it is not made by them. I don't know of one that they have yet. If you do, well, send me a, a link to it and I'll put it down below. Otherwise, I'm gonna link to this on, on Amazon. It's simple, it's cheap, it's just foam. Uh, and it goes on a 15 millimeter lightweight rail system. So let's talk about what it can do. So you get a handle, and the handle has a start stop, so a record button that runs down the side. It plugs in back here to the back, just into your accessory port and the cable runs up the side. And that does give you a nice, when you're holding it just by itself, uh, you know, kind of a nice, little start stop for you. Let's just remove this off of the back of here. I'm gonna unplug this for the moment. So you can rig this thing with just the handle and you are good to go. Um, the cage itself, as you can see here, it comes with sides, a bottom plate with a, this is kind of a Manfrotto standard, and then a top rail. So interestingly enough, the side plates, the top rail and the bottom plate do not connect to each other. Now, for configurability, that's pretty nice. You can now mix and match and put on pieces that you need and want. The negative there is, well, you don't get the solidness of a well-connected cage. So you do get a sliding Manfrotto mount that you can tighten up right here, and it is adjustable on the actual riser itself, and then you can use one thumb screw on the back and you can slide the whole thing forward or backward. Uh, I've got it in this configuration because it is basically how I need it to be. And then on the other side, you can see 
This is the ad adjustment right here for um, the rails going forward. And then this right here is a quick release so that you can go directly to an RE dovetail on the bottom, which you cannot do if you have this shoulder pad on here. Now, the handle comes with a 15 millimeter rod for an EVF mount. I don't know if they sell one themselves. I didn't check before I did this, but I had a uh, wooden camera and a small rig adapter and then my uh, Zacuto EVF that I was able to rig on here fairly easily. It's uh, it's not gonna win any neatness awards, but it's, it's very functional um, and it's on there. And that's how I run this configuration. Now the whole rig is fairly lightweight. It is aluminum and it's uh, it's fairly strong aluminum. There's there's a few wiggle points on here, but I don't feel like it's going to break. It doesn't it doesn't feel cheap aluminum. It just it doesn't feel like it's so rigid that you know you could swing from you know just holding it by one of these grip arms. I would always have two points of contact as you should anyway. Um, so on these arms right here, they are adjustable. Let me just tilt this back. So you can loosen this right here and you can go, you can loosen it and you can slide up and down. There are some nice cable trays right here, which we'll get into in a minute. Uh, the hand grips are actually one of the most creative ways I've seen yet to do a hand grip. So we'll put this up here. There is a button right here. All you have to do, Push the button in and you can rotate. It locks in place, push the button, locks in place. So you can do a very quick adjustment. You know, I want this to be like this, but I want it to be like this. You can do that. If you want it to come back at you, you can do that. Tighten that up. Fairly quick, very easy for adjustments. And this is what it looks like in my gigantic Jolly Green Giant shoulder config that, that I would run here. Um, now, let's go through the adjustments here. Um, you can also adjust the side here. So if you wanna adjust this arm's angle, you can do that. That is not as quick, it's just a twist knob, whatever you, you wanna call it. I lost a box, well, okay. Then on the back, so they have these 15 millimeter rods that come all the way through the riser and then go to the back for their V-mount adapter. And their V-mount adapter is, well, it's an angle plate with 15 millimeter on it, and then they have a V-mount plate on the back. Uh, this is a very common uh, configuration. I have one back all the way from my C100 days. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's pretty common. In this configuration, um, I would reverse it again. Um, the plate comes, it, the plate comes upside down for mounting it on here. And so you eject it this way. I want it to be hanging off the back so that it can um, counterbalance, but also there's a configuration where I would have it vertically and I would want it here. When it's in the opposite configuration, if you go vertical, then your battery is upside down. Right now, my battery is upside down. This V-mount plate can be reversed on here. It's just four screws, flip the whole thing over, attach it back down. And OCD will kick in and cause you to do all kinds of things. I've been playing with it in a bunch of different configurations. I never got back and swapped it back around. But this is the angle that I enjoy it at. I would swap the, the V-mount back around. Uh, this is adjustable as well, forward and backward, up and down. Uh, and then you can also flip it all around. Now, connection to power is done through a pretty blue. It's very it's very blue. It's a little bluer than, than Balkan blue. It goes P-tap into the Komodo in the back, very simply. And this will bypass uh, any battery requirement that, that if you get a message saying it's not approved, uh, it bypasses that. Um, so then you also have multiple cable connections on the back. You can purchase uh, cable kits that will allow you to go to, say, an OC monitor uh, if you're going to rig that up top. 
uh, or even a small HD, you can plug into that and then plug into the side over here. Um, you can see they have a lot of, sorry, I just tried to figure out the best way to show everything. And well, you can see all along here, this is the shoulder pad. Now all along here is all your connections that, that they have, one, there's one there, two, three, and then there are two on the opposite side. Okay, so. Let's get into some weirdness things. Things that are not bad, they're just weird. They're, and, and the way I would describe this, this is a shoulder rig that is uncertain of its identity. It doesn't quite know yet what it wants to be when it grows up, and that's okay. Uh, that's what multiple improvements and, and various versions, all of that comes into play and really helps to make a better product in the future, but you can also grow with it. I mean, all these things are little, little tiny things. So first off, over here, so I don't know why, but I mean, I do know why. They're, they're trying to use the same rail here so that they can just flip it over on the other side, but this one's on the top, this one's on the bottom. I mean, my OCD kicks in hard on that and I don't like it. Now, they fixed that for the cable clips. They managed to put cable clip holes on both sides so you can move those cable clips. So why not just rig this up where you could do it on the other way? Tiny, tiny thing. Um, okay, side to side here, and let's, let's do a demo here. So these are very strong, but they, they do kind of wiggle in and out. I'm, I'm not afraid of them. Uh, I've never been in a situation where I thought, oh God, that's so flimsy, it's gonna break. But it's a little flimsy. Let me, let me just shrink this down a little bit here so I can make this rig just ever so slightly more compact on the table. I can move it around a little easier. Uh, I, never, I never don't trust it. It just, I would like it to be just a little more sturdy. And that really has to do with the single connection up here, which is just a 15 millimeter rod to Airy Rosette standard. Um, the, the cable uh, trays right here are kind of nice. You can route your cables if you had, say, a follow focus that you wanted to add down here. It would be awesome if they could figure out how to remove the record button, which is right up here on the top, and oh, what a satisfying click that is. So many buttons, you just kind of push it in and it's kind of a mushy, you're like you're pushing in on chewing gum. This is a, you can actually hear that and my dog scratching at the same time. So it would be awesome if they could figure out how to remove this module and attach it to one of these grips right here where you could just click on it. Now on the grips, the grips, I really love the, the adjustability right here. What I really dislike, is that they've got metal, aluminum on the bottom down here. And that really, um, that's gonna scratch up any surface that you put this on. So you, you put it down and well, if you move it around, that's gonna scratch. I would love to have some rubber end caps on there. Uh, the Ari Rosettes, very strong, I'm not, and any question, these rods are very nice. They have holes in them so you can route your bongo ties through them. You just run a bongo tie right through the middle and then come out the other end and now you've got good cable management. You're probably going to replace these rods and the reason is well, this is not optimal, this configuration for shoulder. I would find some 18 inch rods. Uh, I don't know if Condor Blue makes them, they probably do, but having 18 inch rods will surely change how this rig is configured because you need a little more room around here to move things around. You need a little more room. You need this to hang off the back a little more. You need to be able to push this forward a little bit. You need room under here for a follow focus. You need room under here for a lens support because you're gonna hang a heavy rig, a, he a heavy lens. You, you're gonna, you're gonna wanna balance that. You're gonna wanna stabilize that. So 18 inch rods will really help in 
doing that. I didn't put them on here because it doesn't come with that. I'm trying to minimize all the stuff that I put on here, but that's something that I would absolutely look into. If they make them and they make them in these, these cool, put them vertical slots and use the 18 inch, I think you'll be pretty happy with what you can do. And this will take it all the way out and you can sling this back in for your optimal balance in there. Uh, the cable is, is very nice here. This is coiled and it, it's suitable for what it does, and you can route it however you need. This is just foam. I put it in there because it doesn't come with any kind of shoulder pad. I don't understand that. The uh, the the wooden camera has a a pad that goes on the bottom of an airy dovetail. Their system is tied to the air the airy dovetail standard, whereas this one is tied to 50 millimeter rod. It's six for one half dozen for the other. It doesn't really matter. But it'd be nice if they sold one, preferably one that's offset so that you could slide it further forward and backwards on this. The handle up top is completely removable. You just slide it off one end and you can slide it back on, lock it in place. It is very strong. They do include a bubble level on the top, which you can see right there that it is currently not level, but... I like it there. The top rail is a standard um, NATO rail, and it uses the two screws to screw in, and then this handle is a NATO rail. Comes with a 15 millimeter rod in there for an EVF mount. Let's pull this off real quick. I'm gonna slide this off, put it off to the side, and talk about the cage itself. So the cage, as I said, is not connected to each other. The sides, so this has a nice NATO rail right on the side. You can see it right here. It has a lot of quarter 20s over here. It has an airy rosette down here, and it's a standard airy rosette. To mount this side on here, you have to take off the airy rosette. That is, a, well, I, I would, wouldn't call it a pet peeve, but that slows you down. So the ability of this being not connected to each other allows for quick swap arounds, right up until the point where you have to take the airy rosette off to unscrew the bottom screw. The top screw is accessible, the bottom one not. So the speed that you gained by being not connected to each other, you just erased by having to remove that. It's kind of a con, it's not the end of the world, but you should know about it. The bottom itself is fairly easy, fairly simple. It has a few quarter 20s on it, and it only mounts with the two screws into the bottom of Komodo. Now, another little con there with those screws, the Komodo has really close together screws, and the way this is engineered on the bottom plate, those screws, they touch, and they get really, really tight and it, it becomes a struggle to screw them into the bottom of the Komodo. You're not gonna cross thread it, it's not gonna go in, but you're gonna work at it quite a bit um, for mounting the plate to the bottom of the Komodo. I found the quarter 20s on the sides and there is a three eighths on the top. Uh, there's a lot of good points there. Um, there are none on the front up here, which I thought was a little odd, um, but okay, uh, there are a bunch on here. There's a bunch on the top. There's a bunch on the sides. Um, yeah, it's got a lot and it's got a good machined hand grip there. So, I mean, it's a, it's a good design. I think there's a few tweaks they could do. I would like to see some more quarter 20 mounts on the side because mounting EVFs and monitors in various places, sometimes you don't want your EVF to go with your camera, especially when you have a camera that has an onboard LCD. So in this configuration, I would typically have my EVF mounted, turn that around, I would have my EVF mounted actually to the bottom rails so that I could quickly pop off the Komodo and run handheld real fast, come back on, connect up, and then I have my EVF back up and running. Let's go through some pros and cons. So the cons, we talked about the bottom screws being tight. The rosette mounts, having to pull those off, that's a con. 
the V mount being upside down, but also right side up, you're gonna, depending on how you mount that, you're gonna have to take it off and remount it. Again, it's four screws, not the end of the world, but as it comes, if you mount it vertically, it's gonna be upside down. And yeah, your OCD is gonna kick in pretty hard. Um, their uh, plate only comes with one PTAP connection. And well, I would like two. I would like one to run to my OC monitor and one for the camera. That being said, they do sell the OC cables and, and the small HD cables so you can run power that way. When it comes to the EVF though, I'm gonna have to run that and plug in directly into my battery, which will slow down battery changes. So be it. The Another con, and it's a pro for speed, but kinda, but it's a con for the way that I like cages. I like cages that are connected together. So this being separated, I'm putting that in the, in the, the, the con checkbox, but it's not a huge deal. It just, I like the stability of everything being tied together. And then um, the shoulder pad. I mean, include a shoulder pad. These are not expensive. These are like 40 bucks for this one. Um, I mean, come up with a solution for that. Again, maybe you have one and I just didn't know that. It's cool, not a problem. Like I said, I don't talk to the manufacturer when I'm doing my reviews. Unless there's something like glaring, major, like defective, then I reach out and say, hey, we got a problem, et cetera, et cetera. But otherwise, I don't interact with them because this is unbiased. Um, let's go to pros. So a cool feature is all the tools that you need to configure everything, all these Allen wrenches, they mount to the bottom plate of the Kubota. That is pretty slick. It is, it is a very thoughtful and convenient way. So they're always available to you. Another one is, well, these grips being so easily adjustable. That is magic. I love what they've done here. This is, it's phenomenal. Uh, very fast, very easy. Also the, the slide ability here, very nice, very fast. That is a huge pro and the adjustability up here. So you get multiple adjustments, three adjustments here to help you find your perfect balance. The clicky button, that is another, another pro. And it may not mean a lot to some people, but when you're pushing in on a, a plate of mashed potatoes, you really don't know if you hit record. This, you know you hit record. And I would love for them to figure out, because this is a module, for them to figure out how to take the module off and go right into one of these grips. That would be phenomenal. Another positive, another pro are these cable clamps. That is really good. When you put a follow focus down here, a little wireless, that is really nice to be able to route cables or start stop buttons or anything down here. And I give them a lot of credit for, for thinking about the little things that will make us tidy camera folks, well, tidier. Um, <laughs> I mean, overall, this is a, a pretty solid offering from Condor Blue. The price is pretty reasonable uh, based upon what you're getting. Uh, the the color is very nice. I do appreciate the uh, the blue boxes. That's 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 a really nice touch. This gray that they have here really really ties in nicely with the Balkan blue. Um, it is well, it's a really nice shoulder rig. Is it the ultimate shoulder rig? Well, it's close. Like I said, I've tried quite a few of them and constructed a few of my own, and this is by far the best configured. Uh, right out of the box and most capable uh, so far. Uh, there's a lot of things to like about it. There's a few things to change and a few things you can tweak, but it's it's quite usable. And it's something that I have been using and preferring it over the wooden camera, which weighs a lot more and a couple of other options that I have been testing and not necessarily liking. Um, it is, it's a good shoulder rig and that brings us to the price. The price is fairly reasonable. I, I mean, camera gear and camera rigs, they're not cheap. They're, they're not cheap to make. People think that, oh, you're just 
you know, machining some aluminum. It takes a long time to machine all of this. So I get cost. I understand. The cost is pretty reasonable. But just, you know, between you and me, the, uh, the, the, there's a deal on this. Yeah, for Red Komodo users, uh, if you go over to the Red Komodo users group on Facebook and join that, there's uh, yeah, there's there's gonna be a special deal on these, and um, I might just go ahead and put the uh, promo code down below in the description. That might uh, might come in handy. Just saying, if you want a little discount, it's uh, it's down below. I wouldn't call it the ultimate shoulder rig but I would call it the most ultimate shoulder rig for Komodo. It's a, it's a pretty solid value, and it's definitely something that, that I will continue to keep using because it does check off a few boxes that my others did not. So what do you think about it? What, what do you think is, is important on a shoulder rig, and what do you think is, well, not so important? Put that down below on, on, in the comment section. I w I'm really interested in what you look for in a shoulder rig. And uh, yeah, uh, remember to subscribe, click the alert bell. That way you'll know when I'm live streaming or when videos come out. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you liked it. You know, thumbs up over here. And uh, you know, you can support me. You can join as a member of, of the channel or there's some links down below if you wish to support me that way. There's all kinds of ways that, uh, well, you could help support this channel. But as always, as I like to leave it, my, my little catchphrase is uh, don't let your passions center around your life. Let your life center around your passions.